I'd love to hear a little bit about the process of how you arrived at what looks to be a kind of faded um, Piaf Parisian uh, color palette um, mixed with that incredible noir sensibility. How in the world to put those together? And gentlemen, actually, before you start, can I have you all move up to the microphone? Oh, oh there's a minor detail. <laughs> there you go. I, well, it all really started with Guillermo. You know, he has a, a real visual uh, eye and lots of good reference. So he had already picked, before we even started, a, a building that we, uh, we used for the exterior, which set the tone. It was a late Victorian building. And from there, we referenced a, a movie, The Red Shoes, for an arch window. And then we, I, we, we all worked together to develop that. that. And, you know, these guys brought beautiful uh, wallpaper, kind of like that, to bring the scales into the room. And, and the palette was... The palette is a very Guillermo thing. The first thing we did was deal with the palette. So that's why the movie's so color coordinated. Um, you, you spoke about your Toronto team in your acceptance speech, and um, we'd just like to know how significant it was to have a team from Toronto um, working with you and how it feels right now. I have 35 years in the business now and worked in Toronto almost exclusively. So I've worked with and watch the business grow in Toronto and go from children's television to Academy Award winning films. It started with Goodwill, Goodwill Hunting, Chicago, now us. We have world-class technicians and we want to keep it that way and keep, keep going. Build more studios and we can do more. The other thing too is that what's amazing about this year with trades is that Toronto, above and beyond with everyone in North America, with uh, The Handmaid's Tale and Shape of Water, we really came out on top. So it's a really, really big thing for 873 and all the other unions uh, in Toronto. In a way, this is a continuation, I guess, of the first question, but could you talk about some of the sort of the Cold War period aesthetic and the institutional aesthetic that you also used for the design? Oh, yes, to, to contrast the sort of romantic notion of her apartment, the Lake Victorian apartment, we, Cameron and I talked about institutional architecture, and we chose brutalist-style architecture, which is very prevalent in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And the reason why we wanted to do it, we wanted heavy contrast uh, with the hard, harsh materials of the concrete, and then we introduced that, that teal, teal green color that was very, very important. It was very important to have that very, very visual contrast between the two worlds, the worlds where she meets her lover and the, when she brings, her back, brings him back to that, that wonderful, decrepit, but beautiful old uh, apartment. What was the toughest part of working with Guillermo del Toro? Um, you know, the really amazing thing about Guillermo is that he knows what he wants visually. So as long as you're in there with him, the guy's with you. Like he really, you know, once you develop a language with the man, he lets you do your thing and lets you go above and beyond what he sort of has given you as a basic. But no one's more well-read than that man no one knows more about things than that man. He'll reference everything and give it to you, and then you can go with it. And he doesn't forget anything. And he forgets nothing. 